Hey guys here, Nathan Clark here. Uh, you might have seen me on some of the gold shows and everything like that, but you know, one of the things I do like to do is off-road. I got my Jeep about three years ago and it's about time to start upgrading it. So I got a hold of Terraflex. Terraflex gave me a lot of information out there, you know, about their products, where they're made. Um, a lot of that matters to me. And the reason I want the CT3 kit is because it's got the control arms on there. They're adjustable. When you start lifting up a Jeep, basically if you just put a lift on it, it kind of pulls the differential and everything back towards the back of the vehicle, so I'm on the front. Uh, same thing on the rear because it kind of goes in, kind of goes out. So with the CT3 kit, you got the adjustable control arms. You can actually adjust it out to make sure that your differential is centered up right. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, some people are like, ah, it's fine, put an inch lift on there. That's probably okay. But you start going above two inches, it's time to do control arms. Also, the CT3 kit, I want the Falcon shocks. I want the 3.3, fully adjustable. Hey, you know what? You're gonna spend that much money, go ahead and get what you want. You know, it's it's gonna be good. I might be sleeping in the garage, more than likely I probably will be. You know, it's eh, it's part of it. When wife sees all those packages, my ass is probably sleeping out here. So that's how it is. Um, but also, you know, the 3.3 shocks are fully adjustable. So you can do soft, hard, then you can do your fine adjustments. So you can put it on the number two, adjust all the way down to number one, adjust all the way to number eight. You can kind of get your feel exactly where you want it at. Let's jump right into it. Next thing you wanna do, is remove the sway bar link, 18 millimeter. Zip it off of there. Of course, I got wobbles and everything else makes it easier for me. Got that off. Having a little bit of wobbles helps out quite a bit. After you get the bottom bolt out, it should slide out. You just get your little pry bar, pop it out like that. It should come right here on top. Boom. Don't do this no more. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, but no need to film it, so there you go. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the four wheel drive, push the button in, kind of wiggle, kind of hard holding the phone down at the same time. There you go. So you just gotta basically push this in real good. Pull it out. Wiggle around some, it'll come out. After you get this unplugged, come over here and pull these clips out. You can use like needle nose, some dikes, just don't cut them, pull on the back side. You can push this one right out. The one at the top right here, it's kind of a bugger to get out, but it's not too bad. Just put some uh, pliers on there, some needle noses, and kind of wiggle it out, and it should come right out. So it just pops in right there. Next thing we're gonna do is pull out the plug for the actuator. I'm just gonna get, get a shot of it. It's got a little white tab on this Rubicon. Some videos show a red tab, mine does not. Push down that sucker, <clears throat> and then pulls out. It can be a pain in the butt. Be careful, be gentle. Don't break the white tabs. As you can see, I already tore my knuckle off on one on the other side. So make sure you just kind of push down on it, and she'll come out. Next, I'm gonna remove the lower shock mount. I know it says to take that off right now, the bracket for the brake line, but I'm gonna pull the shock out of the way, get my grinder in there, put a little notch in those like little galvanized tabs, and then bend them out of the way, cause man, they are a booger. Next, I'm gonna remove the shock itself. I got the bottom out. You're gonna take the bolt out. I went ahead and just trim this out just a little bit. You gotta trim it out anyways for the shock, so might as well do it now. All right, got the shock out of the way. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little notch across these. It'll make them bend over so much easier. I tried the other side without it. Trust me, it's a pain in the butt. You can do it, but I'm gonna cheat. As you can see, all it does is notch it just a little bit. So I get the focus in just enough for it to give an easy bend spot because we don't need this no more. Garbage. After you get your grind marks in there, you don't have to go very deep. Just gotta get enough in there. You come across and you can put your pliers on the tip and where your grind mark is. And then you can kind of just push down on it and she'll just bend right up out of the way. And then you pull it out. All right, so now I went ahead and removed both heat shields from the upper control arm. All this is 10 millimeter bolts. Get your ratchet wrench, throw it on there, take them off. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lower control arm, loosen the top one. I already got the other side off. I'm just gonna loosen this one up on the top. Take this bottom one out. So I take it off here, here. It's pretty simple. All right, so I got both nuts off. You got 21 on one side, the nut side's a 24. So you, now you can just kind of wiggle it around, pull the bolt out, drop the lower control. All right, 
So we got the lower control arm. It'll come right off there now. Then you just pull the bolt out. Junk. All right, it looks like everything is clear. All my lines, all my vacuum hoses, connectors. Lower this bad boy down some now. All right, we got lower down. You see everything's got plenty of play. Everything's unhooked, nothing's broken. We'll yank these springs out, because you know what? They're junk. Next, we're gonna install the bump stops. They just slide in and slide out. They're a bird to get out, but gotta get a little manly with it. Get manly with it. Got it in there. As you can see, I didn't use no grease or anything. I just kind of just pushed like, damn it, got her in there. I'll try to show you on this side how it comes out. Let me see if I can, my phone just right. Close enough. So I just gotta, gotta get angry with it. And the other one. I got to get a little bit aggressive with it, but they go right in. All right, now we're about to install the lower bump stops. So I got two and a half inches I got to put on there for the Rubicon. Everything is marked in the package, so it's pretty nice. You know, quality stuff comes marked. All right, guys, one thing the instructions didn't show is you do have to remove the drive shaft. I tried lowering it down, but all this goes, not that side. So index it, put your mark on it so you know which way it goes on there. Take 15 millimeter, pop them out. All right, so we got going on here. Got the drive shaft off now. Got it lowered down enough. The bump stops, is kind of loose in there right now. Put the springs. You see they're kind of in the saddle. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna start jacking it up slowly. I got one jack point right there. One right there to kind of keep it straight as possible. All right, kind of got it basically kind of centered up a little bit. Put my jack stand back on this side. Put my jack under the pinion. Gonna jack it up, get my drive line back in there, and I'll start pulling up correctly. All right, kind of got it kind of started there. As you can see, it's got some Loctite on it. The kit does come with a tube of Loctite. Make sure you put a little bit on there, tighten them up. All right, got both lower control arms on. Kind of a little booger to get on there by yourself. If you had somebody else, you have somebody kind of push on this a little bit, get your, you know, bolts lined up, but a little pain in the ass by yourself. My son's at school right now. So I want to get started on it. Um, it's like Christmas for me, so I can't wait. All right, guys. Got this all trimmed out. Got the shock in there. I mean, my lord, it ain't that hard to put a shock in. I'm pretty sure most of y'all have done that. The oblong side of the shaft goes towards the axle. You got to switch the bolt out or a hit here. Switch it out with your sway bar link that goes right here. It's a little shorter. It'll clear. Bada bing, bada bang, baby. All right, guys. Putting on the track bar now. Make sure it's fully in there. Your sway bar bolt goes through there. And then basically all you have to do is just mark it. Mark it. Drill it. Done. All right, so I got it all drilled out. Everything lines up. Um, that bolt there, that nut on the backside is a bugger to get on, just let you know. But it's all there is to it. Not too hard. So after you get your track bar on there, you want to make sure you go right here. And make sure you got it all centered up. Loosen these up. You can adjust this nut. Get your steering wheel straight, and you're good to go. Make sure you measure eyelet to eyelet for the stock measurements because you're using the drop bracket, and then you can fine-tune from there. And so far, it's worked out pretty damn good. Another thing I'm going to show you, this is where the track bar, bolt, you got to drill it out, goes to it. There's no really access into it. So what I do is I get a screwdriver, and I put it right in there, go up against the head of the nut, and push on it, give it a lot of tension, tighten up the top side, and you'll be good to go. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Wrench won't fit in there. Nothing I have will fit in there. So this is probably the only way to do it. All right, guys. Kind of just, just skip some stuff just because it's not real, you know, hard stuff. You got your brake line adapter. It goes under your shock. Basically, all you do is just put your uh, ABS line in first, brake line on top. Make sure you go clock to clock. Make sure you got plenty of play. Pretty simple. Um, not bad to do. Just gonna go over the steering stabilizer with you real quick. It's pretty dang simple. You got your spacer goes here, bracket, bracket. Comes with two new bolts. Use the original hardware there. 
You got three bolts back here, one on the back side, two on the top side. Cock your wheel all the way out to the passenger side. It goes on super easy. There's no need to have a whole lot of uh, explanation on this. It's uh, straightforward. All right, got the front end basically done besides torquing stuff down, tightening the control arms down when it's on the ground. Uh, I was gonna show you the quick disconnect. Um, it's pretty simple to go on. I mean, that's basically all it is to it. So you basically put one bolt down on the bottom. It has a little saddle for the axle. You put your sway bar link in, you get your quick pin. Make sure you put these in before you put everything together, tighten them by hand, no impacts, stainless steel, just note that. The other side. Same way, make sure your geometry's right, floor to your sway bar. It's not too bad to do. Pretty simple kit. All right, so now it's time to start in the back. So right now I've got the e-brake pulled. Can I come over here? You go down here, you see where the e-brake cable goes. Put you some vice grips, put them on there, lock them down, leave it on there. Do the same thing on the other side, then release the e-brake. Got the part brake release now, so I can just go ahead and just take this right off. All right, next thing you wanna do is come up here and you will see that little bracket right there. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. There we go. Right there. And that holds your brake lines on for your part brake. You gotta basically take that out, get these lines running right here. You gotta squeeze these clips in right here. Squeeze those in, pull it out. It's already unhooked over here. And reroute them under this so you go this way with it. Instructions do say it's a 15 millimeter for your part brake cable holder. It's a 13 millimeter, just let you know. These little suckers can kind of be a pain in the butt. It's got three sides you gotta push down. So you push one down, hold it down, kind of push it in, it'll hear it click, get the next one, get the next one, work it around, and then it'll pull right out. As you see, I got this one already rerouted for the pass driver side. Now I'm gonna pull this one through right here and do the same thing right through this way. All right, got both of them rerouted under the cross member, under the fuel lines, all that jazz. Then you just hook it right back in and you're good to go. You're gentle with these clips when you're unhooking everything. They're kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. And that's kind of weird. Mine's got a little oil on it. Huh. Next thing, put your jack under it, put a little tension on it, remove all your sway bar links. Then loosen your control arms up, all four. Next you want to do is move your sway bar links and your shocks. Your shocks, you can kind of pull this panel down get right up into it with a wobble socket 18 millimeter same thing with the sway bar links 18 millimeters all right so we got the sway bar links out the shocks out next thing i know we're going to loosen up the control arms top and bottom just loosen them up don't take them out next we'll move the brake line bracket 13 millimeter bolt out put your bracket Pull it out of the slot, pull it up out of the way. Put your bolt back in here so you don't lose it. Next, remove the bolt for the drag link in the back. She loose now, loose as a goose. That bolt, just push down on it, pull it up to the top side so it don't hang up when you lower it down. All right, lower it down. Springs are completely loose. The vacuum line, I have it right at the point of probably no return, so I'm gonna leave it right there. I can take the clip out of there, I guess, but if you want to, take it out. All right, sorry, it's hard to record and uh, show you how to put a spring in, but I mean, it's not too hard. It's a pain in the butt. If you have two people, it'd be great. My son's at school right now, so. Here we go, the isolators, they kind of popped out a little bit. Um, they're kind of a bugger to get back in with the spring, but not too bad. Make sure you put the right spring on the right side. Part numbers are all labeled because it's good quality stuff. Next thing you wanna do is install your bump stops. Make sure these holes are to the outside of the Jeep. Pretty simple, six millimeter, 14 on the other side. All right, so we're gonna put the drag link bar on the rear now. Kind of settles on there. You got a spacer that goes in here. Use the new bolt because it needs to be a little bit longer. And then after that, come over here and drill your holes. 
All right, guys. So after you get the bracket kind of on there, go ahead and do your pilot holes on this side because you don't have enough room to put a half inch bit and a drill in here unless you got angle drill. Take the bracket off, go through the back side, drill it through with a half inch. All right, so we got it all mounted in there. I'll put the drag link on after you get it raised up and everything and get the axle kind of centered back up. Uh, next, gonna put the spacers on the sway bar link. They're right there. All this is a block and a couple bolts. Nothing, nothing to it. Didn't know this until I went to go put my shocks on. You got this little plastic panel off here. It's uh, not a big deal. I mean, a couple little screws and it pops right out. Now you can get your new shock on there, get the access you need for the reservoir. All right, got the shocks on, sway bars on. I'm going to do the adjustable control bars. I'm going to do the bottom first. Make sure you measure them out eye to eye, center to center. This little trick putting these control arms on. Do both lowers at the same time. Get it down. Put it in there. Get your jack. Jack it up or lower it down to get your holes lined up. Two people helps, but boys in school. This is up ahead, but I'm going to skip back because you need to do it before I did it. Don't put these in yet till you get your top control arms changed out. The bolt hits the bump stop. 10-4. All right, got all the lower control arms on, upper control arms on. Got a mount back in there. Still got to put the mount on that side for the bump stop. Um, put the tires back on it. Get everything tightened down. And uh, start messing around, tinkering a little bit. And got to torque the front down still too. So not much left. Let me go ahead and show you guys. I went ahead and, and clipped the little clips here, zip ties, for the sensor back here for the differential locker. And then also I cut one vent, so I got a little more play. Hooked the lines back up to it that way. Should got enough for the articulation and everything. So we'll see how it does.